Players transferring to different programs and universities is nothing new in college football. It happens for a multitude of reasons. Maybe you had a bad spat with a coach. Maybe you're just not getting the playing time and opportunity you want currently. Maybe you just want to move to a better team suited to win it all. Whatever the case, the number of college football players is becoming a staggering amount. And honestly, it should be of some concern. The biggest concern for all of this especially being why exactly all these players had suddenly started transferring. We've seen this giant boost to transferees because of the new NIL deals players have, and this could become a serious problem really fast. In 2021, we saw 2,538 different players enter the transfer portal. Even with how big college football is, that's a stupidly insane amount and is a giant boost from previous years. More and more people are starting to move around schools, even with the NCAA one-time transfer exception rule. 2022 shows that number is only going up, as we had more than 3,000 different transfers this year. Yeah, these are some big numbers, and they won't seem to be going down anytime soon with the continued rise of NIL deals. We should also note the caliber of players entering the transfer portal. Transfers are always happening, even before the NIL deals. But now the type of players entering are the elite class. We should already be used to disgruntled players leaving their current teams to go play for a team where they might actually get playing time, and that's how most transfers go. However, these transfers are very different. We're seeing a bunch of four and five star recruits jump ship and move to different programs. Almost all these transfers can be attributed to NIL, leaving their current program to play for a big name school for more name recognition and fame, or play for a team that can get them way better NIL deals. It's insane how we see all the top talent has moved around so much instead of staying and developing for their original program. The teams with very obvious advantages are the big name ones or the teams in bigger cities like California, while the smaller teams in smaller states continue to struggle. People gunning for the NIL deals want the best coaches, the best facilities, the bigger name recognition teams, the bigger markets, and the smaller colleges simply have no way to combat this. Top-tier programs simply have the unfair advantage, which has to suck for the teams now. Even if they get lucky and have a two- or three-star recruit do well, they aren't even guaranteed he'll stay and develop on the team that discovered him. Believe it or not, we have seen this kind of thing before, and what's happening right now happened a long time ago. If you follow any kind of pro sport league, you know this is a widespread issue, especially in the past. The only problem is the league can fix this problem with a lot of salary restrictions like capping a team's entire salary or letting other teams pay a finite amount, while the team that drafts a player is able to pay the most amount. Yeah, it doesn't really work for colleges and their amateur players who aren't getting directly paid by the college. Well, at least not on paper, legally. Some big names in the college football world have been moving campuses and by extension teams. One of the big names you might have seen more recently is top defensive player and one of the best cornerbacks right now, Travis Hunter. Now, Travis entered the transfer portal a while back, transferring from Jackson State to the University of Colorado. Yeah, come on, he didn't transfer from Jackson State because former Jackson State head coach and one of the biggest names in college football, Deion Sanders, took the head coaching job at the University of Colorado. We also saw top quarterback Sam Hartman transfer to join Notre Dame. We also checked out wide receiver Dominic Lovett leave the Missouri Tigers to join the reigning champs and insane super team, Georgia Bulldogs. We see players joining these giant programs not only because they're bigger names in college sports, but also because they want to play on a better, more talented team. Because a winning team is a team people are going to love watching and catch headlines. It bears repeating, small campuses just aren't going to be able to compete. How do you compete with these giant schools? These teams have the history, the better facilities, and quite obviously, a lot more money to spend. The best example would be Alabama. Now, Bama has the aforementioned football history, legacy, and culture. Alabama also has arguably the best coach in all of college football. Add into this all the factors that already make Alabama such a hotbed for football talent. The fact that they have millions they can willingly spend, yeah, it explains how they're at a steep advantage. All of that explains how Bama got a top defensive back, running back, and wide receiver last year when Gibbs, Ricks, and Burton all transferred. Yeah, craziness is ensuing, and it's not stopping. We also heard the rumors of Marvin Harrison Jr. leaving Ohio State. The new influx of NIL deals has the entirety of college football shaken. 
All right, yeah, I've been rambling about NILs this and that, but you're probably sitting there going, what is an NIL and what does it mean? So NIL's the acronym for Name, Image, and Likeness. NIL deals are regarding a student's aforementioned features and to be paid, sponsored, endorsed by different companies, and of course deal with commercial agreements. Now through deals like this, students can be paid monetarily, be paid with assets, stocks, etc. And as long as it conforms with certain metrics, it doesn't affect a student's amateur status. It's pretty big that NIL deals don't affect students' amateur statuses and it allows the students to continue playing in all manner of college sports from D1 all the way to D3. So, how are students today able to make money off their image without revoking amateur status? Well, it's thanks to a lawsuit that started in the early 2000s. And if you're a fan of the OG NCAA basketball and football games and were wondering why they stopped making them, well, you'll learn why now. A bunch of NCAA players sued the NCAA about athletes having no share of the revenue when their name and image were used in the NCAA games. Now they won that lawsuit, and it's also why college sports wouldn't be the same thing for a long time. And then in 2019, the Fair to Play Act was enacted in California, with other states following suit, letting players finally make their own deals and profit off of their success as athletes. NIL isn't just for football, basketball, and track stars, by the way. Any student athlete at the D1 level is able to succeed and make deals of their own. Name, image, and likeness deals aren't inherently bad. These student athletes should have had the ability to profit from their hard work even at the college level. However, we need to realize that as new deals like this form, we still need laws and regulations to form to help navigate this new period of college football. To ensure that students don't get exploited and that unfair practices and unbalanced teams aren't the future of college sports.